All right, so we're going to start with the ones that you guys want to go over first. And then we're going to go and hit some other ones that I feel like are going to be important. All right, Damage. Number one. Okay, so everybody, please be on number one. Everybody should be on number one. You should not be anywhere else. You should be on number one. You should not have a calculator in your hand or anything. Okay? You should be on number one. Doesn't mean put them away because you might need them. But to start with, we're just going through and annotating. Um, you're annotating along with me as I'm going through and annotating these. All right, so it says, what is the surface area of the three-dimensional figure represented by this net? All right, it tells us right here that we are finding what? We're finding the surface area. Now, what do you notice? Um, Logan, you go to the bathroom. What do you notice about this, this figure? What is this? What three-dimensional shape is this? Uh, Gunner. I believe it's a rectangular pyramid or a square pyramid. Right, so it's either a rectangular pyramid or a square pyramid. Now, we have to figure out which one it is. So, looking at just the base, what do you notice about the base? Marley? Yeah, so it's all the same, which means is this a rectangle or is this a square? square. This is a square. So, the formula I need to find the area of a square is length times width. You must memorize the square slash rectangular pyramid or squares. I can't even talk. Square slash rectangle formula. You've got to know that a square or a rectangle is length times width. You also have to memorize the formula for a triangle. So base times height divided by two, or half the base times the height. If you don't know both of those tomorrow, you're going to not do well on the test. Those are the two that you have to have to solve every single problem that you're going to see. All right, so what are the two numbers that we are multiplying together to find the area of my square? Lo uh, Dominic. Three. And it's only three because it's a square. Three. So I'm doing three times three. All right, now for my triangle, I can do base times height divided by two, or I can do half the base times the height. All right, what is my base? What is my base? Kaden? Huh? No, no, well, what's, sorry, what's the number of my base? No, what is the number? So if I'm looking at this triangle, what is the number of my base, Kaden? Okay. So three, and then what am I multiplying that three by? What is my height of that triangle? Lauren? Eight. So I'm going to do 3 times 8, which is 24, and then I'm going to divide it by 2, which gives me what? What is 24 divided by 2? Uh, Colton? 12. 12. Now, how many of these triangles that you cannot see, how many of these triangles do you think have an area of 12? Alden? Throw it in the garbage, son. That wasn't an option. Throw it in the garbage. Okay, there we go. All right, so how many of the triangles so I just found the area of this triangle have the same area as 12. How many of these? Four of them because if you're working at all four of them, you would have all different numbers, but the middle only one of them has the height. Right. So because my base is a square and all the sides are the same, and then I know all the heights are the same because it only gives me one height, I know that I can multiply this 12 times 4. Does everybody understand that? Now, what if my base was a, if you did not throw that away, son. I did. Alden, I'm going to be very honest with you. If you did not throw it away, I'm not going to way. write it up. I, I'm, I'm going to write you up, bottom line. I asked you to throw it away. So you have two options. You can actually go do it, or you can go to the office. I lost 
the other one. Yeah. So, two options, son. Throw it away or go to the office. Like, that's, that's all we're doing. Okay, so pack up and go to the office and I'm going to write you up. I lost it. We're, we're not yelling. We're not screaming. I'm not yelling at you. I'm asking you to do something. You're choosing not to do it. So those are the options that I'm giving. You are interrupting my instruction. Empty out your pockets and go throw it away or go to the office. So everything that's in your pockets right now that is a piece of paper is going in the garbage. All of the piece of paper, all the papers, all of them, just put them in the garbage. Yes, I have to watch you now. Again, I, everything out of both pockets, everything. Everything out of your pockets. Even my markers? Yes, put them in your book bag. Everything out of your pockets. So go like this and empty your pockets for me. Thank you. Um, so does everybody understand why we can multiply this by four? Is there anybody who doesn't understand? Okay. Now what would happen if our base was a rectangle? Would we be able to still multiply this by four? If it was a rectangle? What do you guys think? No. Why not, Kaden? Because in a rectangle, the uh, side to the side, let's say, but sides on top and bottom was different. So therefore, our triangles on top and bottom would have a different, would have a different base than on top of our one on the side. Perfect. So does everybody hear what he just said? Top and bottom are going to be the same. Left and right are going to be the same if it was a rectangular base. But because it is a square base, we can multiply this number by 4. So when I multiply 12 times 4, raise your hand, what do I get? 48. 48. So now what do I do with... 48 and 9. Colton? You add them together. Okay, so everyone on your calculator, type in 48 plus 9 and tell me what you get. Alden, sit up, please. Alden, please sit up. Thank you. Take that off your head. Uh, Talia? 57. Now, on your test tomorrow, you're going to have questions that do not have multiple choice. So you're going to have to type in your answer. Okay, and you'll notice these first couple don't have multiple choice. So there's no way for you to check your answer. Okay. All right. Thumbs up if this one made sense. Right? Okay? You're like, okay, I think I think I got a, a, a square pyramid. All right. What is another one you guys would like to go over? Josh. Oh, number seven. All right. So everybody go to number seven. Okay, so number seven says, the figure below shows the design of a cardboard box that is shaped like a rectangular prism. All right, so it is telling us what our shape is. Then it says, what is the surface area for the box? Now, I am not a fan of this question because it's really hard to count like your, your lines, okay? But the way that we figure out our, our numbers is to count the lines. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So for my first rectangle, I know that I'm doing length times width. So I'm gonna do six times and then one, two. So I'm gonna do six times two. So raise your hand and tell me what is six times two? Uh, Jay, sir? 12. 12. Now Jay, sir, how many of these rectangles do I have that are six times two? No, and this is why this problem is hard. You do not have four. You have two. You have two. Right, so we're gonna multiply this by two because this one is an A and this one is an A. You know how we like labeled them A, B, and C to make them like identify? So 12 times two is gonna give me 24. All right, my next rectangle. Excuse me. 
is going to be this one. So I know the side already, right? Mm -hmm. What is my side? Josh? Six. Six. Okay, now I have to count the other side. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do six times five. Raise your hand and tell me what is six times five. Ellie? Thirty. And what can I do with that 30? What can I do with a 30? Uh, it's Aaliyah. Yes. Do you know why? Okay. And that's okay. And that's why I'm asking, so that we all understand why we can multiply this 30 by 2. Lauren? Right. So technically, this one is a B. And this one is a B, right? So those two are B, so I can multiply both of them by 2, which is going to give me 60. All right, and then my last one is this shape or this shape. So I'm going to do 1, 2 times, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so what is 2 times 5, Marley? 10. Marley, how many of those shapes do I have? So I'm going to do 10 times 2, which gives me 20. So now I'm going to do 60 plus 20, sorry, 60 plus 24 plus 20. All right, type that into your calculator. Sorry, you can't see that. Type it into your calculator and then stand up when you have your answer. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Do you have a question? Do you have the answer? Okay. All right, Leah, what is our answer? All right, now there's a way to check to make sure you got this right because if you said that these little skinny ones were the same and you multiplied them together, you would not get 104. Okay, so with that, this is a good thing that this is a multiple choice question. Okay, because it lets us know, okay, these are not the same. So these rectangles right here are not the same. It's A, B, and then technically C. All right, um, another one that you would like to go over, Kaden. Number three. All right, so let's look at number three. So it says, um, Josiah is building a bird house out of plywood. Two diagrams represent the birdhouse are shown below. So they give you two diagrams. They give you the... <clears throat> So they give you the 3D shape, and then they give you the net. All right, it says, uh, Josiah will make a floor and the walls for the birdhouse. How many square feet of plywood will he need um, for the project in all? So we have to find, essentially, the surface area of this shape to figure this out. So what do you notice about this shape? So what do you notice about this? What do you notice? Um, Logan. It's a rectangular pyramid or a square pyramid. Okay, so it's either a rectangular pyramid or a square pyramid. How do we know which one it is? Because it's important for us to know. Bolton? For, like, a rectangular pyramid, all the sides are going to be different. For a square pyramid, it's, all the sides are going to be the same. Okay. And they only give us one number. And they give us this little mark right there. That little mark is on every side. So that is telling me that each one of these sides equals four and one fourth. Okay, that tells me that this is a square. So if this is a square, I know that I'm doing length times width. So I'm going to do, and I do not deal with fractions whenever I do not have to. I'm gonna do 5.25 times 5.25. All right, type that into your calculator and let me know what you get. Okay. 
<laughs> and you could just tell me like the point da da da. You'll actually have to tell me the number. Um someone new, someone new. Alright, Kylie, what'd you get? Not just 56, but, yeah. So 27.5625625, sorry. All right, so that is the area of my base. Now, what do I know about all of my triangles? What do I know about all the triangles? Lauren? Um, Right, so we know that all of our triangles are going to be the same. So I can find the area of 1 and multiply it by what? If I find the area of one of these triangles, and I know that all of the triangles are the same, I can multiply it by what? 4. So I'm going to do 6 times 5.25. Again, put that into your calculator. Raise your hand when you have your answer. Josh? Um, 31.5. So 31.5 or 31 and a half, and then I'm going to divide that by 2. Again, punch that into your calculator, and then raise your hand and tell me what do you get. And make sure you are writing this down. Okay, so you have an example in your notebook as well. Uh, Camila. Okay, so 15.75. All right, what can I do with this 15.75 now? What can I multiply it by? What can I multiply it by? Uh, Dimaje. Four. Why? Yep, so punch into your calculator, 15.75 times four, and again, just tell me like the number. You don't have to tell me like, try to say the decimal name. Uh, Bentley? 63. So now, what do I do with 63 and 27.5625? What do I have to do with those two? Uh, Dominic? Add them together. Add them together. So again, everybody in your calcu or on your calculator, type this in, raise your hand, and tell me what... Actually, go ahead and stand up. Do a little bit of movement. Allie, what'd you come up with? Abby? Oh. Alright, so you come up with 90.5625. This is also 90 and 9 sixteenths. And again, you can punch in, remember, you can punch in fractions to your calculators. Okay? So that is an option for tomorrow. Um, all right, what's another question you would like to go over? Marley? 16. We're not going over 16. You're not going to see it, so you don't need to worry about that one. All right, what's another one, Marley? Um, uh, okay, so everyone go to number 13. All right, so number 13. This one says, if I can, there we go. Which type of three-dimensional figure is represented by the net, this net? 
All right, so let's talk about the characteristics um, of this shape. How many triangles do you see in this shape? How many triangles do we see? Um, Camila, okay? So I see two of the triangles. Sorry, that's supposed to be a triangle shape. All right, how many rectangles do I see? Marley? Three. Three. So knowing that I see two triangles, that should automatically tell me it cannot be a triangular pyramid or a pentagonal pyramid. Why? Why? Sorry. Um, can I get rid of pyramids knowing that I see two triangular bases and three rectangular bases? What do we know about a pyramid? Okay, so knowing that a pyramid only has one base, but it also, all the other sides are what shape? What are all the other sides, regardless of the base, what are all the other sides of a triangle? Or, um, sorry, all the other sides of a pyramid? They're what? A triangle. I know, I'm sorry. They're triangles. So we can eliminate these two. Now, have we ever talked about a pentagonal prism? No. no. So even if you're not sure if it's a triangular prism, we've never spoken about a pentagonal prism. So process of elimination gives you the correct answer for this one. Okay? Hopefully you know by now a triangular prism has two triangle bases. Okay? But if you don't, just remember, like, we've never spoken, I've never talked to you, we've never talked about a pentagonal prism. So if that is the answer choice, you know it can't be that because we haven't learned it. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so the correct answer for this one is D. I see. Okay. Uh, yes, Talia. Number what? Number 10. 10? Yeah. Okay, go to number 10. All then. Just take your body. Leave everything where it's at. Don't take anything with you and just sit outside at that desk out there. Don't take anything with you. Do not take anything with you. Out the Do not take anything with you. All right. So it says, Rose's dad is painting her baby brother's toy box shown in the diagram below. What is this shape? Looking at the numbers, what is the shape? And you need to pay attention to this because you are going to see something very similar tomorrow on your test. So what is this shape? Jay, sir, what do you think? I'm thinking like a cube or a rectangle. It's, it can't be a rectangle. It's got to, because this is a 3D shape. And it's not a cube because what do we know about a cube? All the sides are the same. So there's only one thing left that's made up of all rectangles or squares. What is it, Talia? This is a rectangular prism. All right. Then it says, Rosa drew a net to find the surface area of the toy box, and she found the surface area to be 62 square feet. The question is, which net did Rosa draw to find the surface area? Okay. Now, let's look at each one of our options. We essentially have to go through and find the area of each one of these shapes and ultimately find the surface area. So it's a little bit more work for this problem. So looking at this top shape, I'm doing 5 times 3. What is 5 times 3? Uh, Leah. 15. Okay. Then this shape, 3 is over here, 5 is here. So what is the area of this shape? What is the area of this shape? Raise your hand. So this is five, this is three. So what is the area of that shape? Uh, Dominic. 15. All right, what do we know about our bases in a rectangular prism? And why does this keep doing this? Um. 
All right, so. This is 15 and this is 15. What's wrong with that? What do we know about a rectangular prism? What do they have to have with their bases? Dimaje? Well, these two are equal. Okay, but think about the base. So the top and the bottom, the outside and the outside, the front and the back, they all have to be what? This, one space apart. Shh. Why are you screaming out? Yes, they have to be parallel, which means they never intersect, right? Which means they cannot be next to each other. So 15 and 15, if they're the same base, cannot be here and here. There has to be a space in between these two numbers. So therefore, we know that this is wrong. That cannot be our answer. Does everybody understand why? Is there anybody who doesn't understand? You don't understand? I do understand. Not, not, uh, I was talking to Maja. Huh? Not okay. As we go through, I think you're going to see. So let's keep going. And then if you don't understand when we're done, um, I'll explain it a little bit better. Okay? All right. So looking at B, again, we have 5 and 3. So what's 5 times 3? Uh, Gunner? 15. 15. I know that 5 is going to run all the way down this. So my next one is five times three. What do we, what's five times three? Colton. 15. So if this reason can't work because these two are next together, what do we know about these two? Can't work because they're next to each other. All right, let's go to C. All right, so C says here we have five and three. So what's five times three? 15. All right, I know all of these are going to be 5. So now I have 2. So I have 5 times 2. What does that equal? 5 times 2. Bentley? 10. All right, I know that this is 5 and I know that this is 5. So I'm going to do 5 times 3. What does that equal? 15. And 2 times 5 is? Is what? 10. All right, so Dimaje. See how this one is every other, okay? Where this one, the two are right next to each other. So this is why, this is what I mean, it has to have a space in between the two numbers that are the same. Does that make sense? All right, so right now, how many of you guys think that this is gonna be our answer? I mean, has it met their criteria so far? Yeah, yeah it's met their criteria. Now. This arrow is pointing to this side. So this side and this side, I'm going to do 2 times 2. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with 2 times 2? It's four, but on the other side, it says 3 on top. So it can't be that. Well, this side is going to equal 4. But looking back at our original shape, our ends a square. One side cannot be a square and the other side be a rectangle, can it? No. Because if it's a square, this would be two and this would be two. But that's not. It's two, five, and three. All right? And if you look at this side, you have three here and two here. So this is going to equal six. So does that work? No, it does not. All right? Last one. We have 15, we have 10, we have 15, we have 10. Then we have these arrows pointing that this is two and this is three. So then I have six and six. Add them up on your calculators. And then tell me what your total is. So add up 15 plus 15, 10 plus 10, six plus six, and then tell me what your total is. Is he still playing with a piece of paper? Dimaje, what'd you come up with? 
How did you get 152? What in the world? What? So what's 15 plus 15? So it's okay. Type in 15 plus 15. Um, you can actually just throw it away. Got it. All right. So you end up with 30 plus 20 plus 12, which gives you 62. So this meets all the requirements for the space in between our bases. Then when we add up all of these, we get the same surface area. This problem is hard because of what? Why do you think this problem is hard? Um, Kaden. You have to do a whole lot of work. I mean, you cannot just guess at this problem. Like, you have to do the work to get this one. Um, yes, Dominic? Um, I was confused on that part right there. Cause, What's um, that part right there? There's a whole bunch of that parts right there. The one where it's 64. Because um, the 3 is showing the side, and the 3 isn't equal to that one. Right, and that's what we're saying, because this side is telling you that this is 2. This side doesn't have that, it's, and this is a 3 right here. So in, in the world of, let me finish, you ask your question, let me finish. In the world of math, if I folded this side up and this side up, this side has to be 3, because they connect. It cannot be 2, then it wouldn't connect, it wouldn't be a 3D shape. So this is wrong. That, that, that's the whole point of this. This is wrong. This cannot be 3. And if it's 2, add in 4 plus 4 instead of 6 plus 6, you get 58. Either way, this is not correct. There, if you said, okay, well, I'm going to assume that this side is 2, and I do 2 times 2, I get 4. So then I do 15 plus 10 plus 15 plus 10 plus 4 plus 4 gives me 58. Does not give me 62. Does that make sense? Yes. Number 20? Mm -hmm. All right. Number 20. So everyone gets a number 20. So it says um, triangle QRS has a base of 16 and a height of 32. Okay, which it shows right here. This is my height of 16, and then this one is my, sorry, this is my base of 16, this is my height of 32. It is asking you, what is the area of triangle RST? Now, raise your hand and tell me, what is my formula to find the area of a triangle? What's the formula to find the area of a triangle? By now, everybody's hand should be up, because we have to know this. We have to know this in order to pass our test tomorrow or even work on it. Um, Lauren. Uh, All right, now you're saying, well, I technically, I'm gonna use a different color real quick. I have to find this triangle, right? But I don't have any numbers for my triangle, do I? Which number do I have 100%? Don't have to do anything. I just know it's there. Marley? 16 or 32? 32. 32. 32 is my height. So I have that number. I have to find this. I have to find my base. How do I find my base? Kaden? Yep, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to do 16 minus 10. Why? Why do I have to do 16 minus 10? Lauren? Because um, the RTS, we're trying to find that area of the triangle. Sorry, because why? Because 10 can't be the entire base of that triangle because it's like almost split in half. Okay, well, 10 can't be the entire base of the triangle, plus 10 is telling us that it's the base of Q and T, right? And 16 is telling us that that's the entire base of the big triangle. All right? So you have to do 16 minus 10, which gives you 6. So my base here is 6. Now do I have my base and my height? 
And can I solve this problem? Yes. So I'm going to do 32 times 6. Everyone punch it into your calculator. Do you have a question? Not right now. Let's finish this one at least, and then you can. All right, so you're typing into your calculator. 32 times 6. Raise your hand and tell me what you get. Josh. Now, if you forgot part of your formula and you look and say, okay, my answer is 192, how do you know that is not your answer? How do you know that is not your answer? Dominic. Well, what if you forget to divide by 2? How do you know that that is not your answer? Right, that's not on it. So hopefully that is telling, oh, hey, I got to divide by two. So again, in your calculator, divide this by two. Lauren, 96. So your answer for this one is 96. All right. Real quick, let's go over number 22. Okay, so everybody go to 22. So this one says, excuse me, what is the area of triangle QRS? Go ahead, babe. All right, so what formula are we using to find the area of a triangle? What formula are we using to find the area of a triangle? Colton? Okay, so you're picking those two. Now, what is my base? What is my base? What's the base on this one, guys? Landon, what do you think? Okay. So my base is six. What is my height? Because technically, this is my height right here, but there's no line on it. So how do I know what my height is? Scarlett? But how do I know that? Right, because from here to here, it is telling, telling you that that is your height. It's five inches or whatever. All right, so now I'm going to do six times five. Raise your hand and tell me what is six times five? Kaden? Kaden, do you see that as the answer choice? You do. Why do you think they put this as an answer choice? To throw you off. To throw you off because what do we have to do? We have to divide this by two, which gives us 15. Okay? Be careful with that one. Be careful with all of the triangle ones. What do you have to do with all of your triangles? You have to divide them by two. And y'all know this today, but don't forget it tomorrow. Um, all right, what's another one you guys would like to go over? Uh, Camila. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I got to zoom out a little bit. So number 24 says, which of the following uh, two-dimensional nets of polygons can be folded um, to create a paper cube? And I know you can't read the question because it's blurry, and I apologize. Um, so first and foremost, how many squares does a cube have? So how many faces does a cube have? Dimaje. Nope. Not nine. Logan? A square has six faces. Okay, so six faces. So I'm going to go through real quick and I'm going to count each one of these and make sure that they have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Go ahead. Okay, so this one has six, so that might be good. This one has six. This one only has five. So this one is gone, right? And then this one, what do you notice? Marley. Right. Right. So those two are gone. Okay. Now we're looking at these two. Both of these shapes have six sides. 
How do I know which one is correct? How do I know which one is correct? Um, Ellie. I know B is correct because if you like fold up A, where is the top and the bottom? Right. So these two flaps are going to either be my top and my bottom or my left and my right. Okay. This one does not, it's just a straight line. So we would just fold it essentially into a circle almost. So it would just keep rolling instead of, and it would be open. So the correct answer for this one is B. Okay. All right. What's another one you guys would like to go over? Let me see someone I haven't called on. Um, Leah. Who? Um, we're not going to go over that one because you won't see it. And it's very similar to what you guys did yesterday. All right, pick another one. Huh? Okay. Um, Scarlet. All right, 25 says, which three-dimensional shape can be made um, from this pattern? All right, so again, let's talk about this. We have two shapes that I can see. I can see triangles and I can see rectangles. So how many triangles do we have? How many triangles do we have, Kaden? Two? All right, so Kaden, what does that eliminate? I didn't hear what you said. Pyramid, triangular, pyramid. triangular pyramid. And what other? Why? How many bases does a triangle have? One. And the faces of a pyramid are all what? They're all triangles. So we don't have enough triangles to make it a pyramid on the outside. And it's got technically more than one base. How many rectangles does it have? Colton? B, and I think it would be, be easy because I already know the answer. Okay, well, hold on. So we have three rectangles, which means do we have enough for a rectangular prism? Yes. No, because a rectangular prism is made up of all of what? what rectangles. This shape is not made up of all rectangles, right? The shape has two what? Triangles. Two triangles. So therefore, the answer to this one is a triangular prism. Um, let's go to number eight. Number eight. Do you have that one? Okay. All right. So number A says, which pairs include a three-dimensional figure and the net that represents it? Choose all that are correct. So when it says all, that is telling me that there's a chance that there's more than one that I'm going to pick. Okay? So let's go through this. What shape is this right here? What shape is this one? Uh, Damage. This is a triangular prism, right? So triangular prism. Well, this has three rectangles, so that part is good, but what is it missing? It doesn't have two triangles. Right, so not enough triangles. So this one is a no-go. Okay, the next one. What is this? Raise your hand and tell me, what is this 3D shape? Uh, Camila, it's not a triangle. What is the, the whole shape? It's okay. You're good. Um, what is this this shape right here? So nothing else. We're just looking at this shape. What is that shape? Gunner? Um, a rectangle pyramid. No. Look at the shapes, guys. Look at the shapes. Colton? Triangular pyramid. This is a triangular pyramid. A triangular pyramid has how many triangles in it? It's got, are you sure? The base, 
is a triangle, right? And then all of my other sides are triangles. So it's four triangles all together. How many triangles does this one have? So does that work? No, y'all need to study your shapes tonight. All right, the next one. C, what is this shape? Raise your hand. What is this shape? Marley, it's a cube. What do we know about a cube? Kaden? All the sides are the same. All the sides are the same? What are all the shapes of the sides? Squares. Squares. And how many squares do we have in a cube? Six. How many, uh, Camila? We have six. So this one and this one are good to go. So that is a correct answer. Let's look at the last one. All right, this one looks a little funky. So um, looking at this, what is this? What is that shape right there? Uh, Logan. It's a square pyramid. So my base is a square. Does that work so far? Yes. And then I'm going to have one, two, three, four triangles. Does this have four triangles? Yes. yes. So then that is correct also. Okay? So remember, this is a, like, pick all that apply. So this is going to have possibly more than one answer. Does that make sense? All right. Um, what's another one you guys want to go over? All right, Kaden. All right. So number five says a packing company produced a cardboard mailing container um, as represented in the two diagrams below. Um, it says how much cardboard is used to make one of these containers. Uh, type the total surface area in um, square inches in the box. Sorry, that was too hard to read. Now, not looking at our net right now, what is this shape? What is that shape? Huh? Yes, this is a triangular prism. So what do we know about a triangular prism? What do we know about the triangles? Um, Ellie? Yes, the triangles are going to be the same. Now, looking at this shape, what is this, this net missing? If this is a triangular prism, what is my net missing? Kaden? the second triangle. But do we need the second triangle to find the surface area? No, we do not. All right, now, this rectangle right here is gonna be length times width, so I'm gonna do seven times 11, which is gonna give me 77, right? What do I know about this side right here? What do I know about this side right here? Only two people? No, what do I know about this side right here? Dominic? It's 11. It's 11. What do I know about this side right here? Colton? It's 11. It's 11. What do I know about this side? What do I know about this side? Because this is where this one gets a little confusing. Oh. What do I know? Uh, gutter. Um, I believe that would be 7. Yes. It's seven because again, you have this little tick mark right here that tells you that this side, this side, and this side are all the same. So this is gonna be seven and this is gonna be seven. So these areas all equal 77. Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. All right, now we have to find the area of the triangle. So it's base times height divided by two. My base is seven. And my height is what? What is my height? Dominic? My height is 5.5. Okay, so everyone type into your calculator 7 times 5.5. Bentley, what'd you get? What is it? Okay, 38.5. And then what do we need to do with 
What do we need to do with 38.5? Nope. Yes, we're going to divide by 2. So again, punch it into your calculator. What do you get when you do 38.5 divided by 2? Logan? 19.25. Now, this is the area for one triangle. How many triangles do we have? Right. Right. So, and does everybody understand what Ellie just said? Yes. You don't have to technically divide here because you know that the triangles are the same. But if you want to divide, absolutely divide, and then you know that you're going to have to do what with it? Multiply. Multiply by 2. Now, what do we do with 38.5, 77, 77, and 77? What do you have to do with those four numbers? Bentley, go ahead, add them all up. Stand up when you have your answer. All right, Landon, what did you get? Yes. So that should be your answer for that one. All right. Listen. There are all of the answers to the study guide on Canvas. On those questions on the study guide on Canvas are stars next to very, very, very hint, hint, wink, wink ones that if I were you, I would look over tonight. Because you are probably going to see them again tomorrow. All right, I have yet to decide if I'm going to let you guys use calculators, but you are not using your notebook tomorrow. There's not gonna be any formulas written on the board tomorrow. There are two formulas you must memorize. What is the first one? Triangle, raise your hand. Er, Raise your hand and tell me what is the formula for the area of a triangle. Dimaggio. Base times height. Okay, so that's one. What's the other one that you can do, Talia? No, 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 for the triangle. Say, I didn't hear. Base times what? So half the base times the height. So you can do base times height divided by two, or half the base times the height. That is for a triangle. What is the other formula you have to know? Gunner. Length times width. Which is for? Triangle. I mean, like square rectangle. Square rectangle. These are so important. <laughs> Y'all have got to do a little bit of studying tonight. I know there's baseball or basketball games. I know there's all stuff, kinds of stuff going on. But you've got to study a little bit. Okay? Um, please go ahead, pack up. Please return my calculators and get ready for lunch. <laughs>